Well, you asked for it. You got it, bodybuilding fans. The War for the Worlds went great. We threw out a couple training tips in there. You wanted a complete DVD series devoted exclusively to how to get a championship chest, back, legs, arms, and shoulders. And we got it coming for you right now. Standing with me, of course, my partner in crime, Kenny Santiago. He's going to be helping us out here as we instruct and give you the tips from the pros on how to build a world championship chest. Let's do it. We've already warmed up, get a little blood flowing. Warming up is always uh, a good idea when you're training any body part. Uh, something in particular you have to do, stretching, all that kind of stuff. Mainly what you're looking to do is get on the piece of equipment that you're gonna be looking to use, do a few light sets, get everything working, make sure everything's functioning properly. And then start beefing it up. Easy stuff. Smooth set of 15, gonna get some blood flowing. We'll be bumping the weight up. The key to training chest always focuses on the same basics. Hitting what I call the four points of any body part. That's upper, lower, inner, and outer. And that's gonna to apply to all the body parts we go through in this DVD series. Today we're training chest. We wanna hit the upper chest, the lower chest, the inner and the outer chest. Now there's some people out there who say, well, you can't really uh, separate the parts out with any one body part like that. I've never quite believed that. Uh, as I demonstrated in one of the other segments of the War for the Worlds, uh, you can actually isolate body parts even amongst themselves. For instance, can you just hit the upper chest? The answer is yes, but you have to have uh, the right incline if you're gonna be hitting the upper chest. It may, not, may or may not be 45 degrees or 55 degrees, but a combination of all the degrees, and we're gonna be going over that. Right now, we're gonna start with kind of the basics. We wanna hit a flat bench motion. That could be one of a few things. This is the hammer flat press. Uh, it's a great piece for warming up. It basically is a bench press, except the handles are angled, which I think is much better for the chest. As anybody who's seen any of my writings before in my training knows, not a big advocate of the bench press for a lot of different reasons. One is that it puts too much pressure on the shoulder girdle. Never a good thing in bodybuilding. Uh, another thing is people will tend to use the bench press as their gauge as to how they're doing. Biggest question there is in bodybuilding, what do you bench? As I've said before, it doesn't matter how much you bench, it matters how much you look like you bench. And that's gonna be the key to chest training. Some kind of a flat press is the key. We're using a hammer. There's also a flat bench. Again, it can be used, but it has to be used properly, and I will demonstrate that. We'll get some sets in here. See, the rhythm is nice and smooth, not too fast, not too slow. 12 easy repetitions. Again, I'm looking to build the chest. I do not want to bring in other body parts as I'm bench pressing. I don't want to bring in the triceps, which is something you're going to do if your grip is too close or also if the weight's too heavy. You have to find the middle ground between training the chest and involving three or four other body parts to actually get the weight up, which is never a good idea. You're going to see as Kenny's doing this, he's got the alternate grip that we're using. It's just a a different grip to hit a different part of the chest. Got a nice arch in the back. One of the fundamentals of chest training is you always will maintain an arch to your back as you're bench pressing, okay? If you're looking at me sideways and I was on a bench press, you will always have this type of an arch. This takes the shoulders out of the motion and puts the emphasis on the chest, which is where you want it to be. If you're lying flat back, what's gonna be working is your shoulders too much and your triceps, and you're not gonna get the work in the chest that you're looking for. That is key number one to training chest. I don't care whether you're doing a flat bench, an incline press, a fly, a cable, or a pack deck. That same motion will apply to anything that you do. Big arch to the chest, get the shoulders back and relaxed, and get that press, get that chest in front of you. Now you'll see even as I go up to five plates on this machine, which is a little bit lighter than a bench press, obviously, because we have some leverage work in here. But again, the angle of the handle is imperative. This is a natural position of the arm. This positioning of a straight bar wreaks havoc with the shoulders. Not a big advocate of straight bar movements, be it the bench press or the incline press. 
I believe dumbbells are better, uh, and they also work the independently better. Uh, this is a difference between somebody doing a 500 pound bench, but that same person couldn't do 250 pound dumbbell presses, even if they were to exist. Maybe Ronnie Coleman, but he's a different animal. Ready, Kenny. Shoot. 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 Hey. Good stuff. You want to get some heavy sets. You still want to be under control. You don't ever want to be out of control with the weight. Or again, if you feel that other body parts are work, getting in the mix, again, you want need to lighten the weight. Yes, you can go too heavy even as a bodybuilder. Uh, it's one of the things that keeps people back from making progress. It doesn't help. Four. All right, last set. Come on, power. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on. Eight. Up. 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 One more. Come on. Up. Atta boy. You'll notice that Kenny has a continuous tension on the bar. He never stops at the top and rests. He also never stops at the bottom. Okay, that's what we call keeping the weight in play. Always a good idea in any body part, and chest especially. If you keep the weight moving, the chest constantly has tension on it, and you're gonna tear down that muscle fiber even better. So, pausing at the top is really just a way to rest. Nice and all, but again, now what you're looking for is a bodybuilder. It's more of a powerlifting or a weightlifting technique. We just got some flats in, and now we're gonna go to the inclines. Again, remember the four points of chest. We just did some flats, that's good for the middle. Again, right across the center of the chest. Inclines is the foundation of chest. If you're gonna see a weak point on a competing bodybuilder, it's gonna be all this stuff up in here. And that's all inclines, that's where we're going next. Okay, inclines. Gotta have that upper chest if you're gonna be winning anything. We're gonna go with the 45 degree angle adjustable bench. We're gonna go with dumbbell inclines today. As I said, there's lots of variations. There's dumbbell incline press, dumbbell incline fly, uh, regular barbell press on a, on a free weight bench. You've also got a Smith machine you can use also for that. We're gonna be getting that in just a little while as I like to move that incline up to about 55 or even 65 degrees, teach you how to get that big shelf type upper chest. Let's get some upper incline here, Kenny. Choose your weapon, my friend. Okay. Start with 95. 95 it is. Now remember what I said before, Kenny's gonna be using the same technique we just demonstrated on the flat. Arch to the back, chest is up, shoulders are low. You're pushing that chest out in front of him as he comes up top, looking to get that upper chest built. Light stuff. Easy stuff, good warm up. Notice a nice fluid motion, nice rhythm. It's the same rhythm from start to finish. It's not jerking the weight, he's not using triceps, he's got an easy grip. Good, Kenny. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. It's some of the finer points that make chest training a lot easier, especially when you can start getting up over, you know, the 120, 130 mark in dumbbells. And somebody that's getting up and down, I'm gonna cover that right now. There's an, actually a technique to it, believe it or not. Last thing you wanna be doing is horsing up the 120s or the 130s. Your shoulders are gonna take a beating, that's how you get injured. And it'll take three, four reps out of you just getting the weight up into place. So I'm gonna demonstrate that to you right now. It's very simple and very easy. First thing you do is select a weight past your warm up that you have a, what we call a good working weight. Okay, and that's gonna be a, a good weight that you can get for whatever the reps are you're looking to get. If you're looking to build muscle in the off season, you're probably looking at about eight reps. I never go below eight personally. Uh, that's more getting you into power lifting and weight lifting. Uh, I'm talking about getting 10, 12 reps. That's my comfort zone in which I'm building the most amount of muscle and I can use the heaviest amount of weight. I'm just gonna pick a weight right now for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm gonna pick the 105s right now, but here's basically how you pick them up and get them in the position without killing yourself. Now you're gonna set them out towards the end of your legs, okay? This is for leverage. Makes it very easy to get these dumbbells back. What you're gonna do is you're gonna rock these backwards, okay, using your legs to kick them up at the same time. 
So get yourself set, get yourself square in the chair. Okay, and then it's just a matter of a big rocking, all one motion, you're gonna come back and then have your partner help you up with number one. Okay, and then you can start your set. All right, and it should look something like this. Easy stuff. You get down the same way you got up. Bring them down, bring your knees up, and you just rock forward. It's that simple. Now, simple as that seems, believe me, guys, when you start getting up there and weight, strength starts coming up, that's gonna come in handy a lot more than you think it is. Kenny's gonna use that same technique right now. <laughs> He's gonna try to use that same technique. Big rock, Kenny, I'll help you with number one, buddy. Big arch. Big rock. Hup. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, strong. Up. Big finish, straight arms, that's it. And he'll rock him back down. You'll notice as I'm spotting him, there's a technique to spotting also. You don't want to let the guy sit there and struggle at the bottom, okay, and let him waste all his energy trying to get one repetition. If you'll notice, I keep his arms moving, very little but effort, uh, just my hands on his elbows. In his mind, he thinks I'm helping a lot more than I am. It's a security thing, all right? But anytime you're spotting somebody, keep the weight in play. Don't let them struggle at the bottom unless you're going for a single repetition, uh, like in a bench press type of thing, that's a little bit different. Ah, the magic elixir, old school. A little bit of chalk on the hands never hurts, especially if you're in a warm weather climate. Didn't have to worry about this too much back in New York, but uh, California is a little hotter, so. But personally, I like a little bit of chalk. Jim appreciates it if you don't get it all over the place, so use a bag, guys, you know, a little consideration. Okay, but it just gives you a little bit better, better grip. I like that. Okay, 115s, let's bump it up a little bit. Okay, same technique here, guys. Get the weights out to the end of the legs. Same format, I don't care if they're 115s or 155s, doesn't matter. Ready, Kenny. Now you can't see it from the angle you're looking at, guys. There's an imaginary line that you draw from the ends of your chest straight up, okay? That's the line that you want to bring those dumbbells down and you want it to be outside of. If you're in tight, you're gonna press more weight, but you're also gonna use a lot more triceps. So always keep that imaginary line in your vision as you're looking in the mirror, okay? And as you're coming down, make sure that the insides of the weights are on the outsides of the line. By contrast, you also don't want to be way out here. Okay, that's a fly and your hands would be in the other position, whole different exercise. I'm gonna show you that imaginary line as Kenny's going up right here. Up, power up. One, two, three, four. Come on, strong, gotta have eight. Five, six, strong. Up, up, strong arm, come on, that's it. Okay, and you can see that line that Kenny had right in the mirror. If you're drawing a line, you can freeze frame that if you guys want. You'll see this imaginary line right from his shoulders. It's exactly where the dumbbells were. That's a good square position. And one again, as you're kind of shooting up that weight up into the top position, you can bunch that chest right up, okay? It's all about breaking down the muscle tissue. Okay, Kenny, that's two of the points out of the four that we're looking for. We've got some flats, we've got some incline. We're gonna go to some flies right now, okay? So we're gonna switch the grip. Press is always positioned this way. Flies are gonna be positioned this way, coming out a little bit wider. We're gonna demonstrate that right now. We'll go flies, we'll finish up with some declines. Maybe we're gonna throw in some cable there for your contest, which is coming up. Let's get to some flies right now. 
We're going to be going a little bit lighter. Most people don't uh, fly with what they press with. If you're going to be stronger, it's going to be on a press. Uh, so we're going to lighten up the weight a little bit. I'm going to use uh, about 75s, I'm thinking. Okay, one of the staples of building a chest, flat dumbbell flies. Pick the weight a little lighter, 75s. It's going to be much lighter than a press, obviously. Same technique here, guys. Same roll back in the position. Okay, big arch, even more so than on the press because we're on a flat. And uh, we're going to be bringing these out wide. There's a happy medium between going too close and too wide. You have to find that on your own. Okay. Okay, I've got an arch to the chest. Big back. Now you should be able to put an arm right between my lower back and that bench. Okay. Okay, technique for a fly is very, very simple. You're going to be in a starting position. Okay, again, arch to the back, chest is up. Be coming out wide. You want a little bit of bend to the elbow. You don't ever want to be straight armed, okay? All it's going to do is put pressure on your joints and the elbow and on the shoulder. Definitely not what you want. Come out with a nice position. Again, nice little bend to the elbow as you're coming up. This is the key. You're going to be coming and rolling your wrist together, okay? If you're watching me and I'm on the bench, you're going to be coming up and rolling that the wrists are together. Okay, that kind of motion. You're out normal, rolling. You can see the chest working even as I just do that. Just this motion, you can see the chest is actually contracting. That's the motion you want when you're doing dumbbell flies. Big arch, that's it. Good, Kenny. See how he's got a nice positioning. Elbows are a little bit bent as he's going out, and he's rolling the wrists together at the top of the motion. That's going to be the key to building a chest. You got it, Tom. Good. Strong, Kenny. Come on. That's it. Strong. See, a nice simple roll up. Again, you don't ever want to just throw the weights forward where it catapults you forward. Your shoulder is going to be taking a beating. Remember, and I, and I keep emphasizing the shoulders because you're not just training shoulders when you're training shoulders. You're training it with chest, you're training some with back, you're training some with arms. Your shoulders are involved in literally almost every exercise that you do. That's why you want to preserve the shoulders. You talk to any old school bodybuilder that's been around for any length of time, and that's the first thing you're going to point to is shoulders and knees. So self-preservation is the key to bodybuilding. That's why I'm giving you these tips here, getting up, getting down, taking a bar off a rack, all that stuff comes into play when you've been doing this 20, 25 years. Trust me on that one. All chest. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Come on. Up. Eight. Come on. Two. Up. Nine. Come on. Power up. Up. Straight arms. That's it. Good. Okay, we just got done with flat dumbbell flies. We're going to move into our last point. We've got three, we need four, and that's going to be the lower chest. 
again, a forgotten exercise. A lot of guys have kind of drifted away from the lower chest, but working the lower chest is good. It gives you a nice clean line around the outer pec, uh, and it gives a nice complete look. You can see a lot of guys out there today got nice big upper chest, middle chest, but lacking in that lower chest, and that's going to disappear when you go up and throw a double bicep shot uh, or hit a lat spread. Uh, not good for competition. So let's get that decline bench press, Kenny. And uh, build some of that lower chest. Again, you can also use the dip as an alternative to that, and we'll demonstrate that as well. Let's go hit the declines. Okay, we have located the decline press over here in the corner of the gym. As you can see, there's there's dust all over it because it doesn't get used very often. Uh, never align at the decline, Kenny, or the chin-up bar. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing how the toughest exercise uh, people tend to gravitate away from. But of course, we are fighters, Kenny, and we will use it. But the decline is one of the best exercises that you can use for lower chest. Like I said, uh, dip's also a nice alternative, but you're not going to get the power like you do on a decline. So let's venture in. Some of these are adjustable. This one doesn't happen to be. Uh, they're usually set up uh, in a complete opposite manner of an incline. Again, we've got the 45 degree and an incline. This is a complete polar opposite. Uh, the decline, the more extreme it is, the worse it's going to be on the shoulders. Uh, so they're pretty much all set at, at one particular angle. Let's do it. Easy stuff. It's kind of an awkward position. If you're not used to using the decline, it's going to feel very, very strange. Okay, but we're going to observe the same technique, even though we're on a decline, as we do with the incline and the flats. Still going to have an arch. Still going to keep the shoulders nice and low, because again, you want to be working on that lower portion of the chest. Let me give Kenny a spot, because these are set up usually behind you, so you're not smacking the bar every time you come up. That's it. What Kenny's doing is just keeping a straight line. Even though he's on the decline, the bar comes up in a straight manner, just like you're doing a regular bench press. No different. Again, nice, easy, fluid motion. Got a nice rhythm going. Again, he just wants to involve the lower chest and not bring in other parts like the triceps or the rear delts. One thing I like to talk about is grip. Okay, it's a question that comes up a lot. Where exactly do I place my grip? Well, most people, as you'll notice, they tend to shorten up their grip as they go on, okay? And there's one good reason for that, and that reason is they want to do more weight. Going right back to the what do you bench gig every single time. The grip becomes a little shorter, a little narrower, okay? And you're able to power up more weight because the triceps and the rear delts in the back all become, uh, you know, working muscles when you're trying to train chest. You want, ideally, a wider grip, okay? The wider the grip, when we talk about wide, you're going to see Kenny right down in here. Okay, you're looking at a little bit wider than shoulder width. I don't care whether you're doing a decline, an incline, or any other motion. That's why we use those imaginary lines like we went over in those inclines. So Kenny's squaring up right now. Stop right there, Kenny. If I'm drawing lines right here, okay, you can see his grip is outside of his chest area. Okay, so a little bit wider than, than shoulder width is going to give you the best chest training and the most amount of muscle that you're working. Okay. Straight up. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Nice and smooth. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. Okay. Guys that are slaves of the bench press, that grip gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And again, it's all because they can do more weight. More weight's nice if that's what you're looking to do. If you're looking to become a world class bodybuilder, it's not important at all. There's no round on stage, that's the bench press round. I'm gonna use the marks on this bar right here as my gauge. Every Olympic bar has these marks, okay? You can use these in a couple different manners. You can put your thumbs right, fingers right on there. You can use your thumbs as your guide. If you wanna get really wide, I go about an inch out from where those marks are. You got the same grip every time. Ready, Kenny? So. Sure. Hey.
Last one. Hit the four corners of chest. Flat, incline, flies, declines. Upper, lower, inner, and outer. One, two, three. Strong. Two, three, four. Easy stuff. Five. Ten. Two more. Come on, strong. One more. Power up. Good set. Now, even though the fundamentals stay the same, no matter what exercise you're hitting, there are variations. Okay, I'm just merely giving you one for demonstration purposes. There's also, as we just mentioned, declines for lower chest. There's a whole bunch of for inclines for upper chest. There's incline on the Smith. There's incline dumbbell flies. Uh, you know, there's machines, obviously, if you choose to use a light fitness machine, a Cybex or a hammer. There's all kinds of nice stuff out these days that you can all hit that area. Uh, don't get married to any one routine, guys. I've said it a thousand times, okay? Mix it up, match it up, stick with the routine for a little while, and then throw in a different exercise. Take something in, pull something out, reverse the order. Don't get married to a certain order that you're doing. Your body will get used to that. Much like your body gets used to a diet and you need to constantly move the carbs up and down, your body will also get used to an exercise regimen and you need to kind of keep that moving around. You can just pick different exercises every week if you wanted to. And what you're gonna find is that you get much more stimulation. Your chest will be more sore uh, the next following days by doing a different routine than it will by putting an extra plate on the machine that you've been using for the last six to eight weeks. So keep variety in your routines and you'll get much better results out of it. Okay, we're at the dipping bars. Now there's only two ways to do dips. One is up and down, which is for triceps. The other one is leaning forward, and that's for chest. That's the one we're looking for right now. So take your grip. Now these are adjustable, so you can go inside, you can go outside. Okay, just like we explained with all the other exercises, which is the grip we're looking for? The wider one, that's gonna work chest. Remember your teachings, boys and girls, everything works in opposites, okay? We wanna work some lower chest, we want that wide grip, all right? The closer you go, the more triceps are gonna involve. So we have the wide grip, okay? Just fold your legs up behind you. Again, you wanna be leaning forwards. The more you, forward that you lean, the more chest you pick up. Okay, it's a nice fluid motion. Okay, full range of motion. Again, just working the lower chest. Again, leaning forward. That's gonna be the key to this exercise. You're gonna be up and down your training triceps. Lean forward, take the triceps out of the motion, and put it all on the lower chest. Okay, another variation of the incline, the incline dumbbell fly. We did incline dumbbell presses. Fly is almost identical, except we're gonna incorporate the flat dumbbell fly on an incline. So, we're in position. Dumbbells are up. Get that nice arch we talked about. And this time the dumbbells are facing parallel. Obviously, a press is in this motion. Any kind of a fly is gonna be in this motion. And we're out nice and wide. Again, feel it. You don't wanna be out here straight, and you don't wanna be in here tight, okay? There's a nice happy medium. And straight up over your head. Nice and wide, straight up. As I'm looking straight up in the air, these dumbbells are nice and high. You wanna keep these high to work on that upper chest. Same fundamentals, same arch, same motion with the arms. Again, relax shoulders, coming out wide, bend to the elbows, coming up straight over your head. Again, natural roll of the wrist at the top of the motion, all upper chest. Okay, we're at the incline Smith. This is a great piece to get those various degrees we were talking about before. Most inclines are set up at a standard 45 degree angle. Nice for standard inclines, but we're looking for that void between the top of the chest and where the shoulders begin, or what we call the pec deltaian area. How do we get to that position? Very simple, just like you saw on the War for the Worlds track that we did. We wanna get those different degrees, 55, 65, 75, 
There's all kinds of stuff between 45 and 90, or the places that you're working upper chest and the places that you're working shoulders. So I have this cranked up now to about 55 degrees. Again, that's gonna hit from this area up in that upper chest region. That's what we're looking for. You'll see the same principles apply. Arch to the back, shoulders low, again, chest is out in front. You're also gonna notice my range of motion only goes to my chin. Okay, and that's by design. One thing you don't wanna do, remember that little speech about preserving the shoulders. Well, inclines is no exception. Take your wide grip, again, always ensuring that we're training chest. And I set the bar up so I actually come right to my chin, okay? This is gonna ensure that only chest is being trained. Anything from this point below, isn't doing anything for your chest, it's only ruining your shoulders. Okay, so you're gonna shut that right up to your chin level. And it's a straight up motion. We're gonna do the same thing when we train shoulders, but we'll leave that for another day. That's it for chest right now, we're gonna move into back training. Okay, Kenny, that's it for chest. Upper, lower, inner, and outer. How's the chest feeling? Really solid. Solid is the key, my friend. Yes. And solid training is the fundamentals of a world championship chest. And that's what we just went over. You see the same theme all throughout. Arch of the back, shoulders are back and low. Again, getting the chest out in front of you. That doesn't change no matter what the exercise is. We've also explored some variations. Again, use your head when you're training. Train smarter, not harder. It's always gonna be the common theme throughout this entire DVD series and how to get you from where you are now to that next all important step. So we're gonna be moving on to some back now. Kenny, you got some energy left in you? Still got some energy. You got it, we're gonna hit some back training again. We're gonna use the same fundamentals that we just used with chest. Upper back, lower back, inner back, and outer back. All gonna be dependent on the grips that we end up using. Remember, opposites are what works the opposite muscle groups. Close grips, gonna work that outer portion of the back. Wide grips are gonna use the middle portion of the back and so on and so forth. Let's get some big back training right now. All right, let's do it. Kenny, if I ever write a book on training back, I'm gonna call it Never Align at the Chin Bar. <laughs> and as you can see, there's no line at the chin bar. No line. Chins are one of the toughest exercises for back of all the exercises, and that includes the ones with weights. Still haven't quite figured out why, but bringing up your own body weight seems to be one of the tougher things to do, as these guys are gonna see right now. I like to split these up into threes. A close grip, a wide grip, and a really wide grip. Okay, it just kind of hits three different parts of the back. And I also like to use this a little bit differently than conventional chins. You can use a regular bar and do the same thing, close, wide, and wider. We actually had the luxury of having this ancient contraption here at Gold's Gym. Okay, so we have the cross pieces here on an angle, even better for back. So we're gonna do that now. Kenny, we got a close grip, wide, and wider still. Okay. Only for the tough guys. You can go first. Uh, Kenny, lead the way, my friend. So get something close. You have to come back. There you go. Chins is one of the fundamentals of back. Now the wide grip is gonna indicate that we're gonna be hitting all the muscles down the center of the back. Contrary to popular belief, everybody thinks you go wide, you get a wide back. It doesn't work like that, guys. You're only feeling that wide back, you're gonna feel those muscles out here because of the stretch involved. But that's the only reason why. Rest assured, you're working all the muscles right down the center line of the back. Okay, Kenny. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. Hey, these are tough. Okay, first set's gonna be the close set. Again, I'm gonna take this now. Whether you're using a straight bar or this type of a setup, it's gonna be about the same grip either way. And the key, the straps, always. Take the grip out of the movement and let your back do the work. Don't get any easier. And they're even tougher in the off season when you got an extra 30, 40 pounds on you. 
Okay, set number two is going to be a little bit wider, so Kenny moved up about a foot. He's got about a four foot distance between his hands now. You get a little bit tougher as you keep going out wider, believe me. Two, three, four, five. That's it. Come on. Six. I got you. Seven. Eight. Nine. That's it. All the way up. That's it. You notice the spotting technique on these. Grab your partner right from underneath the latch. Just gonna give him a little help up into that top position, okay? Keep the motion going. Again, keep the weight in play. Always the key to a good spot. And the reason why I mentioned the straps is very, very simple. You don't want the grip working more and you don't want the arms becoming involving more, okay? That's why we isolate in bodybuilding. Isolation is the key to working on the muscle group that you're working on. Same thing in biceps, chest, back, shoulders. Again, I don't care what you're training, isolation is always the key in bodybuilding. I use the straps on anything I can get my hands on, including chins. Grips are for amateurs, Kenny. Wide grips are for pros. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kenny's arms are five feet long, so he's got to go really wide. But as you can see his span's about five feet now, which is very difficult to do. Two, three, four, five. Come on, six on your own. Six, seven, eight, nine. Remember now, with a wider grip comes a shorter range of motion, so don't expect your chin to be coming above the bar, especially if you're working on a straight bar. Okay, and you're this wide. Your arms are wide, you're gonna have a shorter range of motion. Hey, Kenny, this is where shows are won and lost, right here, buddy. Yeah. out of their sockets, but it'll also make your back big. That was the important part. Those are tough. Okay, we got some chins. My recommendation, do them first, guys. Believe me, you're gonna put these third or fourth in the order, you ain't gonna be getting three of them. So. Okay, another basic of back movements. We got the pull down. Arch, okay, we're gonna be isolating. Once again, using the straps, we're gonna be focusing on using what I like to call a non-grip. Okay, we don't want to involve the arms. Matter of fact, we want to take the arms out of the motion as much as we can and put that emphasis on the back muscles. So we're going to be using a wide grip. Also, another variation, we're going to be using a close grip as two different movements. As we know, Kenny, from your teachings, a close grip will work wide, wide and a wide grip will work close. Okay, so let's get that going right now. The key pull downs is getting an arch to the back, chest up, and bringing the bar to the top of the chest. You're gonna pull back a little bit. You don't need to be a robot on these, okay? The more straight up and down you are, the more arms you're bringing in and the less back you're bringing in. See again, rhythm is the key. You'll notice he's got a nice fluid rhythm. The cadence is the same from one to 10. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Easy stuff. Yeah, let's bump that weight up. Here's a little tip of the uh, tip of the day. Okay, it is a good way to use these straps to get the maximum amount of effort involved. Okay, and isolating that back and taking the grip out. Most of these guys use these like this. They'll tighten these right up to their wrist, and then they'll wrap the long putter on the bar. Problem with that is you're still hanging onto the bar. This isn't really helping a whole lot. I've always liked to keep these loose. Okay, guys, loosen these up where you got about an inch, inch and a half, okay, at the end, and then you're gonna wrap that entire thing around the bar, which I'll show you on my set. Now it pulls directly from the wrist. Kenny's actually using a variation of these grips that we got right here, and you'll see, basically does the same thing I just said. These are kind of old school wraps. These are some of the newer things. These are Versa grips, but you can see it pulls from the wrist, and that's what you want it to do. Again, isolating, taking the forearm out, the biceps out. If you're getting an arm pump when you're training back, you're not doing it correctly, or you're not using the straps. Okay, so I got about an inch play. I'm gonna take the entire thing entire end of the strap and wrap it around, okay? And then I'm gonna cross over and kind of bring this in. I'm gonna cinch this in just by wrapping it up. Now it's attached from the wrist and my hands ain't doing much. Exactly what you want. Okay, and now I'm locked in. You can see I can pull down pretty good without even using my fingers. Bump it up. So I'm getting a nice back pump right now and nothing in the arms. Exactly what you're looking for is a bodybuilder. In the old days before we knew all these secrets, the forearms would be pumped right now, our arms would be ready to explode, but not really feel much in the back. If you're not feeling it in the area that you're trying to train, you're doing something fundamentally wrong. And we're gonna teach you the correct way to do it with these training DVDs. So Okay, going from the wide grip to the close grip. Got that handled, Kenny? Okay, wide grips for close. Close grips to work that wide, get that width going. You want a V taper? It's an excellent way to start right here. Close grip pull downs from the front. I like the closer the better in these. There's gonna be a lot of variations of triangle bars and such, it's fine. I like the closer ones. All right, same principles apply. Right to the top of the chest, big arch, coming down, letting the back do the work. See, Kenny's going with the natural movement again. He's coming back a little bit. He's not coming back too far. You also don't want to be straight up and down. Just enough to let that back do the work and take the arms out of the movement. How's it feel, Kenny? Good. Also variations of this movement you can do. In the old days, we used to use a straight bar and do a reverse grip and actually do the same exact movement. Again, just a slight variation. Overhand's a little bit more difficult, but an underhand grip you can do. 
Again, any variation of a close grip will also hit that same outer lats. Another way to ensure that you're training back and not arms is using the straps, but also using these two fingers predominantly. Okay, the more you're using these two fingers, the more you're pulling like in a curl. And we're gonna demonstrate that when we go to long rows, which we're gonna do next. But that's gonna to apply to any back movement you're doing. Even as I use the straps here, all right, to ensure my grip and that I'm using as much back as possible. Okay, predominantly, I'm gonna be using, again, these two fingers is my gripping fingers. The other two are just kind of sitting there, not really doing much. That's gonna ensure that I'm using back and even less arms, again, as I'm looking to isolate as much as I can to work the back muscles. Back's getting pumped, Kenny. Pumping up. That's it. Okay, that's another three there. We're gonna go to long rows now. Same thing, close grip, seated long rows. It's gonna give us a different angle, different approach into getting that back. And again, that four point system that we've been working on, upper, lower, inner, and outer. Okay, Kenny, we got some close grips. We got some seated long row. Okay. We're gonna continue blasting that outer portion of the back. Nobody ever lost the show, Kenny, because they were too wide. Exactly. That's for sure. Again, we're gonna use the trusty straps. And this machine, in this movement, more than any other, you definitely want to be using these two fingers predominantly. If there's an uh, exercise that I see guys using too much arms, it's this one, because the movement is very reminiscent of a curl. And you want to be taking that out of the equation and throwing the back in. So we're going to use them straps, tighten this right up. And again, these, these lower two fingers aren't doing really too much. It's all these top two fingers. Hit the feet nice and high. And get yourself upright, again, chest up, arch to the back. Nice stretch and a big arch. Always keep in your mind, Kenny, you want almost like you're bringing yourself into the motion, okay, rather than bringing the cable back. That's it, big arch, Kenny, big arch, chest up, that's it. As you're, as you're pulling that cable into your belt buckle, you wanna keep this nice and low. You don't ever wanna bring this up high. Keep it low, get that chest out. She's got a nice arch to the back, it's that simple. That's pretty good weight right there, Kenny. I'll stay there.
Okay, number two. Eight, a little stretch. Four, that's it, stretch. Next. That's it, stretch down. And he's using his feet as his guide, okay? If you'll notice that handle's coming right about where his feet end. That's a, usually a good guide. You don't want to go too far again. That's where the lower back's going to come into play. You want to be starting to mess around with the lower back. Very susceptible to injury. Use your feet as your low point. Okay, you don't want to short arm the movement either. And you're going to see a lot of guys doing that. You want to go down about halfway. Again, it turns into a curl. A lot of arms working, but not much back. That's a pump right there, Kenny. Good stuff. One more set of these. Let's go on to that seated upper row. We're going to do the same motion with a wide grip on a machine. Okay, that was our third set and last set on the long row. We're going to switch gears now. We're going to go to an upright seated row. Slightly different. We're going to take a wide grip. We're going to tilt our bodies into the machine and thus isolate the upper portion of the back. There is a variation you can use on the long row, and that's to take a long bar, attach it, and do the same exact movement, but with a wide grip. Okay, slightly variation, but a very good movement. Guys, don't be afraid to switch those grips up and work a whole different portion of the back. Let's move on right now to the upright. Okay, from close grip seated to upright seated. Again, same movement, different grip. And I'm gonna pitch myself in. I'm gonna use this a little bit differently. You can see there's actually spots for your feet down here. I don't like to use those, okay? I'm gonna have my feet out to the sides and back behind me. Again, isolating that upper area of the back, okay, to really uh, just train the back. And again, taking the arms out of the equation, you're gonna hear me say that 100 times, that's the key to bodybuilding is isolation of muscle groups. So let's get that going right now. I'm gonna take a wide grip and on the corners. Again, just a variation. You always wanna use uh, as many different angles as you can when training body parts. All right, you can see the muscles working at an upper area of the back. And again, it's working all the muscles along the spine, okay, right through that upper area. Great for back double biceps. You can see the feet were pitched back. Again, my chest is into the machine. Again, that's to take the legs out of the movement. I'm not that concerned with how much weight I'm using. I'm more concerned with working muscle, okay, and isolating muscle groups. Let's finish off with some three-quarter deadlifts right now, and that'll finish off back. Okay, upright seated rows, great for that upper portion of the back and, and really putting in that mass in that back that's all important in bodybuilding. Now we need to get to that lower back. A couple different ways you can do it. One is with hyperextensions, always a good machine, and we'll demonstrate that. The other one is with three-quarter deadlifts on the Smith machine. And I like these because they're a little bit safer. Uh, as somebody who's had a history of back problems, I can tell you uh, it's always good to be on the safe side. So you can get the best of both worlds right here using the Smith machine. We'll take our standard grip. Then keep the chest upright. It's gonna be going down on a three-quarter motion. Now I have the safety bar set okay, to give you a range motion, but it's just a short movement. You can see it's just a three-quarter movement. Again, purely designed to get that lower third of the back, all right, and increase that mass down along the inside of the spine. All right, looks great when you're doing a back double by, and very important when you're hitting the back lat spread to show that you've got some mass built in that area. Three-quarter deadlifts, hyper extensions, probably your two best bets. Everything else we have is bent over motions, uh, consists of either one-arm dumbbell rows, bent overs, which I don't do, uh, but is a great movement. 
uh, and some other variations. Okay, that was your comprehensive back 101 workout. Compliments of yours truly, the world champ. As you've seen, guys, same format. Four corners of every body part. Upper, lower, inner, and outer, and we hit them all. There's obviously a lot of variations when you're training back. There's single arm dumbbell grows. There's bent over rows. There's T-bar rows. Again, there's all kinds of variations. We're just exploring the basics right now. The same principles will apply to any exercise that you choose to train. Just remember that. Minimize the grip. Again, always isolating the back and the muscle groups that you're trying to train. Follow these tips, and I guarantee you that Arnold will be proud when you say, I'll be back.